will be no food after I'm done. So welcome to State of the Map. My name is Ian Dees. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Great. Uh, yell at me because I am getting a cold, I think. I've talked more in the last 24 hours than I have in the last three months because I work at home. Um, so I'm here to talk about openaddresses.io, a project to collect the world's open address data. Uh, why are we trying to do this? Um, I don't really have to say this to, to uh, everybody, but um, addresses are the way that humans interact with geographic data. Uh, if you have a map, that means that somebody has to be able to find where they are and uh, find where they want to go. And the way that they usually do that is with addresses and not latitude, longitude. Um, So geocoders are the software that converts those addresses into latitude, longitude. Uh, they're very complicated to write. They're very, uh, there's a lot of work that happens in there. Uh, the Open Addresses project is designed to try and make that slightly easier by collecting the open, the address data that's out there and making it available so that people can write better geocoders, basically. Uh, there's a whole lot of other uses that are possible with this kind of data, um, but that is the driving goal right now. This is a very young project. Uh, it started a year and a half ago and just as a Google spreadsheet and has kind of grown organically over the last year and a half to become something that's a little more interesting and is actually being used. So uh, like I mentioned, uh, addresses uh, geocoders take addresses and convert them to latitude, longitude, which then is usable on a web map or is usable uh, in, by a user to uh, make sense of the world. And um, the whole point of open addresses is to make it easier to build those. Uh, there's some existing projects, uh, Mapsense, Pelias, Mapbox has a geocoder, and Nominatum. Uh, they all are really great. They all are open source to some extent. Um, they all work adequately. Um, and they all consume an address and spit out some kind of latitude, longitude. Uh, but the problem is that the commercial space is really the only answer. If you are a company that has millions of addresses and want to get consistently good results, um, Google is basically the only one that does an excellent job. Um, they have a lot of data. I'm trying to, I was trying to come up with some uh, million, billion, but they have tons of search results that they use to improve their geocoder. And they do a very effective job at taking that data and using, uh, using it to create excellent results. The problem with that is that it's commercial. It's a decent API, but um, there, it's a very opaque system, and nobody really knows how to get more access tokens, or nobody really knows how to use it. Um, one story I like to say, uh, like to explain at this point, is that I, I worked on the Obama campaign, and one of the projects I was working on was geocoding uh, a whole lot, millions of addresses. Uh, towards the end of the campaign looking for people who haven't voted yet and we needed to go talk to them and figure out a, a way to uh, most efficiently go find these people and talk to them and convince them to vote. And um, we tried very valiantly to talk to every single Google person we could find, but none of them knew how we could pay any money to get geocoding results more than the free uh, amount. Um, so we fired up a lot of Amazon boxes and used a lot of free amount. But um, the, that's a problem. That, that not everybody has the same uh, AWS budget that I did. Um, not everybody has the time to set that up. And so we're trying to make that easier. Um, and one of the ways we're trying to do that is by improving access to open data that already exists. So for example, addresses 
at least in the United States are, and, and most of North America, addresses are a really important function of government and the, uh, the local government will have created address data uh, internally or uh, for whatever purpose, they probably already have it. And so one of the goals of this project is to try and convince those governments to open it up and be an advocate for open data. Uh, and then once we have the data open and make it public for everybody, the goal is to uh, share the data that comes back uh, from the geocoders and give it back to the data providers so that they can improve their data if they need to. So uh, I have to mention OpenStreetMap because we're at OpenStreetMap US, right? So um, OpenStreetMap does a great job of collecting uh, address data. It's just really tedious, right? It's, you have to fill out four or five fields. You have to type in a number on your smartphone. It, you have to change the little keyboard and you have to like change numbers and you have to follow the street and blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of different tags. There's a couple different tagging schemas that um, are used. And uh, the other problem is that um, although there's 30,000 active members a month, it kind of peaked over the last month, um, there's still only 51 million addresses and most of those address points, and most of those are imported from external data. So deep data, data that isn't obviously on the map, is something that isn't uh, mapped very frequently. Um, which isn't a fault of OpenStreetMap, it's just something that's not as strong. Uh, there's a whole lot of other stuff to map that uh, is easier to do and more rewarding. Um, openaddresses.org is a project that does something very similar. They were on Google Code, but they've kind of gone a little bit quiet. Um, I think that they were a research project uh, for somebody's PhD thesis, and they kind of finished that project and then uh, didn't really release anything out of it. Um, I, I could be co completely wrong about that. I don't want to put any words in anybody's mouth, but they don't have any up-to-date data there. Um, and they focused on Europe, which I will get to in a moment. That's important, but um, we are trying to go beyond that. Uh, Open Addresses UK is a, a recent project um, that is designed is a reaction to uh, the national address data set in the UK becoming a public private partnership and so therefore becoming expensive and not open as it should be. Uh, and so this, this group is basically collecting uh, addresses, but they're not collecting the, the location part of that, the geographic part of it. And so they're, they're a similar project, but not quite doing the same kind of work we're doing. They're also doing it in a crowdsource style uh, whereas we're collecting open data that's already out. So our project is a GitHub project uh, that lists a thousand or so URLs that uh, point off into the ether, into the internet, that uh, we have software that goes through those files and downloads the data, does some transformation on that data, mushes it all together into a gigantic CSV file, and outputs the result. And you can download it. Let's see if this link works. Of course not. Thanks, Google. So you can download it at our website. And um, it ends up being something like 126 million data points. Um, here's a nice map of, is that possible to see? Yeah. So the, the orange blobs there are d address points. Um, all of this data that you see here is a latitude, longitude, and an address. And um, so it's useful for lots of different things like geocoding. You could make pretty maps like this one. Uh, the whole point is that it's there. So I also have to point out that all of this data, it was already out in the wild. We just took the time to go find it and put it on a map. Guys, get off Netflix, I'm presenting. 
Okay, so um, the, the other interesting thing about this is that all it has is the latitude, longitude, and then the address information as a CSV file. So there's no complicated JSON to, or XML to parse. There's no, um, there's no crazy encoding problems to run into. It's just a CSV file that you can process with uh, command line tools, or you could load it into Esri or QGIS or whatever and use. Um, it is 126 million rows of CSV, but it's, uh, it's there. So one of the things that, uh, that we're working on is trying to figure out where we're going to go next. Um, we are, as I said, we're kind of a young project, and it, it started off as just collecting this open data. Um, I'd, love, I'd love to be able to collect more data, but the problem that we're seeing is uh, crowdsourcing address points isn't sustainable. It's not something that can be done very quickly with lots of help even. Um, there's tens of thousands of people that touch open at or open street map, but we still only have tens of millions of points when we should have if everybody was working on addresses uh, it would be done quicker uh, and also at least in the u s citizens are already paying for their addresses uh, to be collected or created and the data set to be co uh, collated so we might as well take that um, and because uh, not everybody releases open data, we're kind of scraping the bottom of the, the bucket in terms of open data uh, that already exists. So um, we, the next step is to actually go talk to people. And so that's one of the things that we could use help with. If you're good at talking to people, like I'm not, uh, we could use your help and, uh, in, in finding uh, more people to work on this kind of project. We also have lots to do internationally. We have tons of data locally in the US, and we have some uh, Northern European and Japanese data. But what about Africa, for example? I'd love to find uh, address data there. And uh, more importantly, it would be great to be able to promote uh, new data to be new data creation, basically, in areas where there isn't addresses and places like the UN, for example, are working on creating addressing systems for uh, folks that don't have addresses. Uh, we'd love to have open addresses be the place to put that data. Um, one of the things that I've heard a lot about in the last few weeks is people would be uh, interested in getting information about uh, if a address geocode is correct or not. So for example, uh, when Google accepts your search into Google Maps, they record what you typed and whether or not you continue interacting with the map or you pan away and uh, move on to something that is correct. Uh, so basically, they use that as a hint to say that the search result was a, the correct one. And we could take that information, uh, collect it in an open way, and give it back to the source data provider so that uh, New York City, if you try and search for an address that doesn't exist, we could tell them and they could go look for it and maybe it actually should exist and they need to add it to their database. Um, another thing that we need to think about is licensing. Right now we leave it up to consumers, people that download the CSV, to figure out what they want to do with licensing. We tell you, as, as well as we can, what the license of the data sources are and vast majority of them are open um, CC by or better, but there are some of them that um, are ambiguous or they're worded weirdly or something like that. We try very hard to maintain a link to where that, that license is and leave it up to the data consumer to figure out if they want to take that risk. Um, the, we're we're going to try and do better of passing that license information through so that decision is easier. So how can you guys help? Um, it would be really great if when you are eating lunch in 10 minutes, you could fire up your smartphone from where you live and search for address data or open data or open data portal or something. And if you find something that looks interesting, to send it to us and, uh, and hop on GitHub and see if somebody else has already committed that data. Um, you could, if you're an open data advocate, you could tell your locality about our project 
And if you're a data consumer or if you enjoy making cool maps, you could download our data and play with it. Are there any questions? I, my contact information up, is up there. Um, you guys are happy. I'm happy to answer any questions uh, later on. Yeah. So the question is, how do I do that, use this data to do geocoding? Uh, so the, the point of open addresses is that it's a big list of addresses. You can take that data and write some software to search across it. The hard part about geocoding is writing that software to search across it in a smart way. Um, the whole point of doing this project is to make that writing software step just a tiny bit easier because you have data to work with, whereas before you had to go find it piecemeal um, or pay tens of thousands of dollars per month to license it. And so um, now that this data is available, my hope is that people like you will write software to try and geocode with it and we'll collaborate with others and us to figure out uh, how to geocode better. Another possibility is that Nominatum on OSM could take this in as another layer, kind of like it takes Tiger and use it as a, another source of another signal in, the, in their geocoding process. Yeah. Uh, two questions. Uh, on your map, there was nothing on France, but we have uh, at least two national databases. And uh, the second thing is uh, we worked on a new geocoder called Adoc, and uh, it's open source. It's very fast cool. and uh, very light. So if you're interested, check it out. Just check out. All right. So the question was, what about France? And uh, the answer is that map is not updated in real time. I'm pretty sure that we have France's data in our source list. I think we are trying to figure out how to break it up in a nice way so that we can properly record the licenses of all the individual states and, and districts and all that kind of stuff. Um, so there, there's some like little bit of wrangling there. Um, it should be on the map though. So, uh, and also thank you, what, what was the geocoder called again? Adoc. Okay, I don't... Like address, oh, it's okay. All right. only for address. All right, great. I saw one over there. So the question was, do we incorporate address synonyms? Right now we just pass through the authoritative data, authoritative data, the data from the source. Um, there is some thought that we should try and um, harmonize that into something. Um, but the goal so far is to always pass through and never take away data that comes from the source. Um, if anything, we would try and add some, an extra column that says, uh, that is DR expanded into drive if we know for sure that that's the case. For example, yeah. for like a full address? So the question is how far do we split the address? Right now, uh, it's just the street name. So uh, North Main Street is the, is the column that we give. Uh, there are some sources that tell us, that break that down into prefix, direction, suffix, etc. cetera. And uh, we currently concatenate those together, but that's kind of, that's, not always helpful. So we're thinking about adding that back in, um, adding the broken apart street name. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, sorry, how do, you, how do you deal with address ranges? We don't. So the question is uh, address ranges, and we don't currently deal with them. Um, we, right now, because we're all address points, um, we basically are ignoring them. But we're trying to figure out a way to do that in a nice way. Okay. So, for example, like the data you'd pull from New York, you just kind of take whatever they have as the canonical address number and you throw away the, the start and end range. Basically, yeah. Okay. We do throw away the start and end range. Yeah. 
What are your plans, uh, Ian, to work on uh, clarifying around the ODBL so we can be doing some of this within OpenStreetMap and using some of that data? So I, the question is, can we, uh, how are we going to clarify ODBL? Uh, so for those of you that might not know, uh, I, there was a little bullet point here that I kind of skimmed over. Um, ODBL, some folks have a confusion or there, there is a confusion or question about whether ODBL's license, the license of OpenStreetMap, um, uh, how that applies to geocoding. And uh, basically, the answer is I don't know. I'm, I'm, I want to push that off into somebody who's smarter than me and can answer that question. Um, I would love to, uh, to make that happen so that we can work with OpenStreetMap um, but I also don't want it to be a barrier to prevent all you guys from feeling like you can't participate. Um, I also don't, I, I'm not too interested in license flame wars, um, but I also want to be uh, open to everybody. It's got to turn red first. Yeah, go yeah. oh, now. Yes, quick, quick public service announcement about licenses, no about lunch. Um, <laughs> when you guys head out for lunch, turn to your right, keep walking, walk past the exhibitor space and leave the building. There will be volunteers to your left and right guiding you along. That's all you need to know. Wait, I thought you said that was about licenses. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. All right. <laughs> yeah. What about places where there is no open data yet? So you would be depending only on crowdsourcing. Is there any other way of doing it, like places like India or parts of China, we don't yet have open data? So the question is, what about crowdsourcing uh, locations that don't have any open data yet? Um, I, I think that that kind of data probably should go on OpenStreetMap. For now, um, I I don't want to build a uh, crowdsource address point database yet, um, mostly because I don't have any time to. But if so, another interesting aspect would be to uh, have somebody else build that, maybe on top of the OSM system, the software stack, and have that generate a data set then that then is pulled into open addresses. The other thing is that um, so far in the vast quantity of knowledge that we have about addresses, <laughs> which isn't very much, is what I'm trying to say. Um, the, the important part is that we're trying to get data from the place that created the data. So in the US, we're pulling that from counties and municipalities. And if, if we start uh, bringing in crowdsource data, um, we need to think about how to incorporate that into the data set. I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm just saying it's a different kind of data. Way in the back. Uh, yeah, I was curious if you could talk a bit about some of the address generation initiatives being led by the United Nations and how that could possibly be leveraged by uh, open address to promote address creation in the global south. So I don't know a whole lot about the address creation initiatives uh, of the United Nations, but I would love to know more about them, and I would love, love, love to have them be uh, deposited into open addresses as one of their steps into the open world. Um, part of why I'm talking here is so that everybody knows about it and thinks about it when they think about open data. And so that I would love that. Um, so that's all the questions I have. Um, let's get you guys to lunch. As Alex mentioned, uh, you guys head out to the door here. And I believe he said turn to the right, right? Uh, there should be some volunteers guiding you. I also want to point out that um, if you feel like it's super busy right now, there is, we're trying to stagger the lunch as well because the building that holds lunch only holds so many people. So if, uh, if you're not super hungry right now, you could wait a little bit and have lunch later. Thank you. <laughs>